Hey, what is going on in here? We have the crypto markets. They're going up and down all day around and we have no data. Why don't you wake up and give me some data on my computer right now? Because we need to start trading or else we're not gonna be able to pay rent for this place anymore this month and we'll all be out. So let's roll. Yes, sir, you got it, sir. What's up guys, I'm Andre from Markets and Data, the place where I help you find data for your markets and markets for your data. But before you go anywhere, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. Faster than CNN would call me a Russian bot if they actually found out that I was building bots and that I'm Russian. So if you're a new subscriber, then I would like to say welcome and I really hope that I can dazzle you with this video and my videos going forward. And if you are a returning subscriber, I just wanna say Thank you for coming back. I'm super excited to be seeing you again and spending this time with you. So what I really wanna show you in this video is how you can take a cryptocurrency exchange API and pull spot data with it. So what can you do with this data once you get it? Well, you can calculate statistics from it. You can also serenade the data, maybe even take it on a date or even try to impress your friends. Well, at least I would try to impress my friends with that data if I actually had any friends. So why don't we go ahead and just jump into the video right now and I'll show you how I construct a Python script. So uh, that Python script will pull data from Binance and then we'll put that data into a Pandas data frame and we'll roll from there. So I'll see you guys in that snippet right now. Man, I haven't seen someone try that hard ever since I saw that movie Forrest Gump where Forrest was trying to chase after that girl Jenny after she left them for like the 20th time. Anyways, let's get into this tutorial and first thing what we're going to do is we're just going to open up our favorite text editor. So in my case that's going to be PyCharm. Now once PyCharm is open we're just going to quickly make some imports and we're going to import requests and play around with the Binance API like we would play around with the products at Beth and Body Works and use up half of them right before leaving out of the store and not buying anything. Now, let's go ahead and crack open that API by opening it up with JSON format and seeing what kind of data we get. So down here you see that we get a heap of data ranging from symbols, price data, closing prices, and etc. Now this data is not organized in the fashion that we want it to be organized in. And what the end result will be is we're going to put that data that we gathered from the Binance API and we're going to throw it into a pandas data frame where it's going to look nice, clean, and pretty. So for my program, I'm going to import pandas as np, numpy as np, import requests, and then even while I'm feeling like it, I'm going to import that nice case of wine and maybe even one of those mail order Japanese brides. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to define my class and I'm going to call it data grab here, although I wanted to call it but that's another tutorial for another day. Next thing, I'm going to define the method that's going to be inside the class as get Binance spot prices. And additionally, I'm going to also make a quick doc string uh, referring to what the functionality of this method is. So basically, as we saw from our data earlier, we're going to want to split up the quote and the base into two separate columns in our pandas data frame. So to do this, I'm going to define a split pair internal method inside of the get Binance method. And for split pair, I'm going to have an explicit variable that we're going to be putting inside of this method. Now, I want my method to return two things inside of a list. I want it to return the quote and I wanted to return the base. So to do this, I'm going to put in some conditionals and uh, just because I know the API already uh, from experience, I know that we're only going to have to deal with USDT, ETH, uh, BTC, and BNB. Those are the four base currencies that everything is priced at on the Binance market. 
Now, for my case, I'm going to say if ticker string is USDT, especially in the last four characters of that string, I'm going to return the first occurrence of that split, which is going to be the quote, and I'm going to add the base right after that for the second part and the list. Now let's go ahead and move on to ETH. Same thing here. I'm going to split up ETH and the last three characters of that string and then keep the first occurrence of that split, which is going to be the quote, and then add ETH as the second position and that list. And I'm going to basically do the same for BTC and also BNB. And then if nothing happens, I'm just going to return NP.NAND. So let's go ahead and continue and then type out the URL and also we're going to call the URL because it's an API and Rich is going to immediately throw that API call into a pandas data frame so then that data frame can do its job and organize the spot prices as it needs to. And just for your convenience, I'm going to print that out so you can see what is going on. And as we scroll down, you can see that we have ask price, ask quantity, bid price, and so on, which has been returned to us by our API call. Now, if you're going to be experimenting with other API calls, you can try to put it into a data frame and see what happens and if it gives you the correct information. Uh, occasionally, you might have to play around with it and manipulate the data a little bit so you can get it format it just the way you want it to. Now the next thing I'm going to do, as you've all been excited to uh, see firsthand, would be to split up those symbols and go ahead and extrapolate the column of quotes and the column of bases. We're going to say bnb.apply lambda x and the function that we're going to apply will be split pair and we're going to apply it on our explicit variable the symbol and we're going to do this for axis one. Now axis one basically means that we're doing it for the column. If you had axis zero, you would be doing it for the row. And the little lambda expression inside of the apply method is basically saying that we're just calling a particular method to be doing uh, one function on that particular variable inside of that column. Now, what we're going to do next is just call drop nan on the whole data frame because we don't really want to keep any of those nans that we might have extracted earlier. Now, for the second symbol, we're going to pull out the quote by applying another lambda function and we're going to apply it on axis one. And just to quickly print out everything, what's going on, because I know it has been a lot here just so we can see and I can also keep track of it. Okay so as you see here we have the symbol uh, ETH and BTC which were originally inside of their list that we split up. And now let's go ahead and pretty things up and just kind of rename everything that we are already familiar with which is going to make it more standardized so that we recognize the symbols and the naming a lot better of our columns. And to do this we're just going to call the method rename on our data frame. We're going to say that the index is equal to a string and then the columns we're going to put in a dictionary of the already existing column names and what we want to rename them as. So ask price I'm going to rename it as ask, bid price as bid and last price as price. Now moving on to the columns that we actually want we're just going to say we want ask bid price volume and put it into a list then we're going to call our data frame and we're going to insert another row and that row will be the exchange which is going to be Binance. Now as I've said earlier we're going to want to make sure that all of the integers and floats that we pulled out from the spot prices on the Binance API they're going to be type float. Alright so once we have that done what I want to do next is just calculate the spread and basically the spread is the difference between the ask price and the bid price. In order to pretty up our data frame even more, we're going to extend those columns by base quote spread and exchange because we want to pull all that data, including the ask bid price and volume all into one data frame. All right, now any video tutorial wouldn't be complete if we did not fuse some of the columns 
uh, from column one and column two and put them together. So uh, to do this, I'm going to use ticker as an example and we're just going to build out another ticker where we combine the base and the quote uh, and we're going to separate those two with a hyphen. All right, and now we're at the final stage of actually printing out and returning our awesome data frame that we've been building. So just so you can see what's going on, I'm going to uh, have the data frame and I'm going to call each individual column on that data frame. Now let's go ahead and set the index as ticker just so we have a nice cool index to go by. Let's quickly delete the name of the index and let's go ahead and just return that whole data frame and run it. Okay, so it looks like we have an error and let me just go back right quick and I need to fix this naming to lowercase and let's go ahead and run it. And as you can see, we have a nice output of a nice and awesome data frame with the spot prices that we got from our Binance cryptocurrency exchange. Now, finally, that we have our data frame, you might be asking, what can you do with it? Well, you can calculate your statistics from it or you can even show it off to your friends, which I'm super sure that they will be impressed by your awesome skills of grabbing data from cryptocurrency exchanges. So, and another thing you could do is just turn this data into a CSV, just like this. And Pandas has a nice method for that, just called 2CSV, and don't forget to put the name of what you want it to be called and the dot csv ending or else it'll just write to that directory and you'll have like a weird file without that csv ending all right guys so that's pretty much it for this video i just want to say thank you for watching and i'm super happy to made this video for you and i'm really looking forward to seeing you guys in my future videos now if you have any comments or concerns please don't forget to leave them in the comments down below i'll always look forward to talking to you and i'll catch you guys soon